Hello everybody, today we're going to discuss about the principal component regression types. In the previous tutorials, we tried to see a number of regression types. So today we'll continue the other types of regression, which is a principal component regression. And principal component regression is a, a technique for analyzing multiple regression data that suffer a multicollinearity problem. We, we uh, briefly defined the concept of multicollinearity in the previous tutorial, so it is better to check the uh, previous videos about the concept of multicollinearity. And these uh, types of regression, that means a principal component regression, drive from the principal component analysis. So it is a PCA applied to regression algorithm that has a multicollinear uh, feature. So this regression uh, helps to reduce uh, error in the regression estimate, in which it helps uh, by adding a degree of bias, and this helps to provide more reliable uh, estimates. And um, this, re this regression, that means the principal component regression, has three major components. The first one is the covariance matrix, the second one is the eigenvectors, and lastly, the eigenvalue. Coming to the Lehman definition of the covariance or the three components, the covariance matrix helps to measure how much the variables are associated with each other, and the second one that means the eigenvectors, they are a director in which the data is dispersed, and lastly, the eigenvalues are important, especially in detecting the direction, that means uh, the variance. And uh, using these types of uh, regression has a number of uh, benefits or a number of uh, advantages. The first one is it helps us to uh, reduce overfitting because the principal component regression fit linear regression model on the uh, selected principal components instead of uh, uh, the original features so this helps us reduce uh, this helps us to reduce overfitting so uh, theoretically uh, this leads to what to a better performance than the standard linear regression model uh, that contains uh, original features the second advantage or benefits from these types of regression is it helps us to uh, eliminate the multicollinearity problem that found in our data by uh, removing the principal components that are associated with uh, the small eigen uh, values. As I mentioned before, the PCA is working on the three major components. Yeah, one is a covariance matrix, the second one is eigen vectors, and the third one is uh, Again, values. So uh, it, it, it eliminates multicollinearity just by removing those small eigen uh, values. Coming to the disadvantage or the drawback of the principal component regression uh, is that um, it, it, it will not be uh, used for uh, feature selection method because uh, all the components that are using in, in this. Uh, uh, types of reg regression are they are what they are somehow not somehow they are a linear combination of original uh, features. What does it mean? So this this indicates that we are still dependent. We are still re relying on the original features and still uh, subsetting of this component. So these are some the uh, drawback. Let me add one more tips. Um, since uh, this type of regression, uh, sorry, this, since this type of uh, regression uh, are used in the model, those uh, these predictors lose their what their what we say the expandability compared to the original uh, future. So it may lose some information. In fact, so these uh, principal components may lose some explainability. Then uh, uh, again I will add one more tip. Then the PCA transformation is some, somehow is unsupervised. That means it doesn't consider the target value when determining the principal component. This means that 
we we have not sure or we we couldn't get any guarantee that the principal con component with the largest variance will be the best one of the predicting of the target. So these are some uh, some disadvantage, but it is better to capture. Uh, it doesn't provide a guarantee for predicting the target, and also the predictor may have some information or it's difficult to explain and the other drawback is since it is com it's a combination or it's a linear combination of the original features so it doesn't consider the feature selection method and coming to the advantages to reduce overfitting and uh, in fact it eliminates uh, multicollinearity so this is all about the concepts of the principal component regression so let's start our business by importing our data. My data is in the form of Excel, it is found in the desktop. Let's browse it. Then here, and data name is RR. So let's import it. Yeah, it, it looks like this. Then, in order to uh, carry out analysis for the principal component regression, you must install the uh, PLS package. So if you have this package, you have to use this syntax and incorporate it into or introduce to your software. Then I have already the package, so just run this package. Then again, let us touch my data. My data name is RR. Then in order to fit for the principal component regulation, we have to use a PCR function. Then you have to indicate here the scale before that. Here is the response variable explained by H, all these uh, predictors or independent variable. Then I suggest here a scale is called so true. This means that I'm telling to R each of the predictor variables should be scaled to have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of what? One. This uh, help or ensure us no predictor variable is overly influential in the model if it happens to be measured in a, a different unit and uh, here also i suggest or i write the validation is equal to uh, cv and again i'm telling to r to use the uh, careful uh, cross validation in order to evaluate the performance of the model by default r will consider uh, k value is equal to 10. so by this way, you can uh, fit or you can create the model for the principal component regression. So type this and submit to our studio. Let's see our summary. So on the basis of this, it will give two uh, outputs. The first one is for the validation. The second one is for the uh, training. So in this scenario, so we will select, as you can see, there are a number of uh, principal components, which is four. Starts from one, two, three, and four. So we will select, for example, in the first principal component in the validation, is this deals about the root mean square error of the predictor. So you can select the least one. So when we see in the, in the first component, it's around 0 0.9, and tend uh, to decrease uh, or it's decrease when you go to the, the second component around 0 0.648 and when you come to the third one again it is tend to increase again in the in the fourth component also tends to increase so we stop or we only combine the first two principal uh, components and coming to the the training is it, it, it explains a lot about the uh, variance. So, if we go to the first one, it's around 64.92 uh, is the variance of the model explained. But when we come to uh, the second principal component, it's around 87, which is very good enough. So, no need to go further uh, for the uh, three and four because the concept of the principal component regression analysis is to reduce the dimension. So it is better to use. We get um, if you if you get greater than or equals to 80, it is sufficiently enough. So we will only combine the first two uh, components again by checking both 
the root mean square error of the predictor as well as the model explanation by the variance. So in this way we can select the uh, number of principal components. But if you want to further to see in the graph, you have to use the validation plot. So this will give this one. As you can see, here is the response variable is granule. So the least root mean square error of the predictor is around you get around two. So selecting two principal components is enough. When we come to the three and four principal components, it tends to increase. Yeah, it tends to increase from this point. So selecting the least uh, root mean uh, square uh, error of the predictor is best. So on the basis of our result, two principal components is enough. Then the second one also the mean square root of the predictor, the predictor. So in order to do that, you have to validation. You have to indicate our model. Our model is what we created here. So val dot type. Then the means you want to get the mean square error of the predictor. The first one is the root mean square. This helps us to get the root mean square. But this is a mean square error of the predictor. So type this and submit to our studio. Then it's similar, still it is around two is uh, better. Coming to the third one, is, uh, especially uh, finding the R square value. So the largest R square will select the principal components. So type this and submit to R studio. So uh, as you can see, here is and the principal component one is around. 40% of the model is explained, but when you come to the principal component, it's greater than 0 0.6. Yeah, then adding more uh, components even uh, doesn't uh, to somehow is decrease in the model explanation. So uh, this, the two principal component is uh, recommended. Again, alternatively, both this yield is the same. So if this is not work for you, you can also go for this this uh, uh, one. So I think it's not model two. Here is model one because our uh, model is what created this model. So type this and submit to our studio. So it yield the same result to the previous one. So on the base of all this. Uh, uh, validation plots, two principal components is what is enough. So you can easily predict your model by uh, using the two uh, by two uh, principal uh, components. So uh, type all this and submit to our studio. So by this way you can uh, predict the principal component regression in our uh, software. So this is all about today's tutorial regarding to uh, the principal component regression analysis in our software. So as usual, if you have any question regarding to my tutorial, you can address me through my email and alternatively you can use YouTube comment box. Thank you.